bishops as we deliberate on how to grow the Catholic Church in Ghana, we will also reflect on the growth and the development of our developed of our beloved country, Ghana. Especially as we prepare for political elections in 2024. We all know that the people of Ghana repudiated the many years of military rule. Most Ghanaians longed for constitutional democracy. And we had hoped that this system of government also we were made to believe will give Ghanaians both political and economic freedom. Yet, after almost 32 years of what is supposed to be a democratic governance, we all know, I'm not saying it, we all know where we are as a country. The bishops, over the years, through military government and this democratic government, have issued statements of encouragement, statements of correction, correction statement of support almost every year and many times during the year, behind closed doors and in public. Yet, nothing, it appears, almost nothing of our concerns and the concerns of the people have been taken into consideration. Yes. In this democratic dispensation, the one that we are practicing now, we have successfully replaced only one political party with the other. And we must be proud of it. We have done it almost peacefully. It is common knowledge, not my knowledge, not the knowledge of the bishops, that none of the two major political parties has fared better than the other. Rather, they replace each other periodically. And when they come in, they do almost the same things as their predecessor party. Then the party that is now in opposition waits impatiently for eight years to come back into power than to do the same thing. This is what I believe we have observed. Um, it's not my creation or the creation of us. It is clear to Ghanaians that the beneficiaries of the political system in place now are the people, are not the people, but the politicians and the political actors and others in high positions. Ghanaians are witnesses to the accumulated wealth which those in power make in record time and as soon as they enter politics. Ghanaians, we look on helplessly because those in authority are protected by the so-called constitution to do what they do. And they are never prosecuted. They are not punished. Because the politicians, they protect their kind. They are at liberty to listen or not to listen, to accept correction or not. And they do so and nobody can do anything to them. And that is the system for a few. 
So how long are we going to bear this? There have been no significant positive changes in our economy since we became an oil producing country. What is the difference between when we got oil and now in the economy? Now, what happened to the gold and other mineral resources? Why are most of our roads in such deplorable state? Why do we keep going to the IMF? How many times? 17. And everybody says, when I come to power, I will not do it. And they do that. Tell me which of the democratic governments have not have an affair with the IMF. It may have different names like HEPIC or whatever, but it is all IMF. Why do we keep borrowing so much? When we are rich, we are a rich nation. Both governments keep borrowing. It's a function of who is able to borrow more. And we are now in a deep financial crisis. Why are we in this economic and financial quagmire? Now, the massive uncontrolled corruption is suffocating the nation, and it's as if there are no checks. Some steal our money through the banks, and they are not held responsible. They are walking around, and the poor people who put their money there are dying and crying. And this walking around as if we have no government, as if we do not have people to be in charge. Now, it appears corruption is legalized in our country. What should Ghanaians do since the existing form of democracy help only a few and leaves the majority behind. What about the impunity and arrogance of some politicians and their defense even of corruption? I see because we place you in power, we should worship you. Should the constitution not be changed or bettered for it to work for all Ghanaians instead of for a few? Should the legal system not be re-equipped to uproot corruption? What about parliament, where the interest of the people is sacrificed for personal and party interests? Why have we not even implemented the findings of the Constitutional Review Committee? Why did they keep it there? Because if it is implemented, it will erode some of their so-called wealth and corruption. Can the government explain to us why we are in this economic mess? Who knows why we are here? And they assume we can't think let alone they don't even have a responsibility to explain to us why we are, other than taking our monies, shaving, etc. Is this the government we ask for? What explanations can the two political parties give to Ghanaians for the favorable agreements we sign on our oil, minerals, power, generation, etc. If even we can read it, can't it be explained to us? And don't we see the results of the agreements that they do? Why are we poor? Ghanaians, more and more, no longer accept the old explanations that government of Ghana have been given. People say, 
we bishops should talk. We talk publicly and behind closed doors. But all our talk, what did you do? They will listen. Nothing. Because the system there protects what they are doing. The political changes around us in Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso, and on the continent should be a wake-up call for the politicians to amend our constitution and legal systems in a peaceful, democratic way. In a manner that make the government work for the good of all the people of Ghana.